The assassination of American President John F. Kennedy took place on an occasion when he was passing through downtown Dallas in his highly secured motorcade. At that time, Secret Service agents and an entire police motorcade were present with him. Not only this, but the FBI. The CIA had kept an eye on this entire route for several days in advance, but despite all this, on November 22, 1963, he was attacked near Dealey Plaza and he was killed on the spot. Within minutes of this attack, the CIA, FBI, Secret Service, and the police created a stir, but despite using so much force, they could not bring anyone else under the ambit of the law except a shooter named Lee Oswald, or they did not want to bring him at all. Was this a well-planned conspiracy, or was it an isolated incident? The shooter dodged the world's top secret agencies and shot the most famous president from a distance of just a few meters. No one was able to digest this official story. There, as also a simple fast route from the airport to the bank where the president had to go. But why was his motorcade brought through the middle of the city and who had planned this route? Was the official who shot at him a coincidence or was it planning? The reality is that only a month earlier, he had been got the job in the book depository, just on a phone call, but how? In the video footage of the shooting scene, this girl wearing a scarf was seen taking photographs of the murder. Why could she not be found till date? And what was her connection with all this? Come, let's understand the full story. Welcome back once again to Enigma Epics video. Guys, almost 61 years ago, American President John F. Kennedy was killed by an attack on his motorcade. The death of President JFK pushed millions of Americans into mourning. At the same time, the investigation in this case has failed to answer many questions of the people. It is believed that the top secret agencies of the U.S. have hidden a lot regarding the assassination and have not made the truth to the public, and it is very wrong to think so. There are all the reasons, the first of which is the selection of the venue where the president actually had to go. President JFK had to give a political speech in Dallas, Texas, for which two options were kept. One was the trademark, and the other venue was the women's building. The White House recommendation was to select the venue of the women's building, but Texas Governor John Kenley wanted the president to go to the trademark. The reason for this was that the trademark was a banquet hall, while the interior of the women's building was not suitable for the president to go there. The venue of Trademark was selected on 14th of November, for example, eight days before this news was not made public. Now, it was the turn to decide from where the president's plane was to land from Love Field Airport to Trademark. How to reach normally the presidential motorcade is taken through a route where there are minimum interruptions or turns. There was also a route which could have bypassed the city and taken the president to the Trademark from outside, but it was not selected. Rather, a route was selected from within the city, passing through the school book depository from where the shooter attacked the president. If you are thinking that this route was specifically planned to attack the president, then you are wrong. This was done on the president's own request, because he wanted to pass through the crowd of people. But if it is assumed that the women's building would have been selected instead of the trademark venue, then the president's motorcade would have passed through this main road. If it had gone towards the east via the road, it would have increased the distance to the book depository, and it would have been difficult for the shooter to take aim, because the president's wife, First Lady Jacqueline, who always sat on his left side, would have come between the shooter and the president. In planning the assassination of the president, it was very important to select the location of Trademark, and as you know, this selection was done by Texas Governor John Kenley. His intentions cannot be doubted because at the time when the president was attacked, he himself was sitting in the presidential limousine with his wife. He was also shot but his life was saved. And secondly, Governor Cannoli was already against this route. He wanted it to be taken from outside the city. Only after reaching the trademark, there was someone who had calculated all these things long ago. The president's motorcade and van was made public only four days before his assassination. That is, no one knew this information before that. But something had happened in the school book depository two months ago, which shows that someone already had this information. Yes, exactly two months ago, 
there was a sudden shortage of staff in the school book depository. In September 1963, Wasley Frazier was named. A man gets a call from an employment agency offering him a job at a book depository. Vasley Frazier lived half an hour away in a town called Irving. He reached the book depository the very next day, on 13th September, and was Roy Truly, the superintendent there, immediately hired him. After a month, on 15th October, Wazel's neighbor also approached the book depository superintendent on phone, and coincidentally, he was also hired the very next day. It was Lee Oswald who was to be arrested after 39 days in the case of murder of President JFK. Because Lee Oswald did not have a driving license, he could not do the outback every day. That is why he had a car in Dallas itself. He took a room on rent and would go to his home in Irving after office timings with Vassal on weekends and return to the book depository with Vassal on Monday morning. This routine continued for about a month, but only for one day from the president's appointment. On 21st November, this routine was broken. On Thursday, 21st November, Lee Oswald went with Oswald Wasley to his home in Irving because he said that he would stay in Dallas this weekend. The next morning on Friday, Oswald went to the office with Wasley. When he came out of the house, he was carrying a long paper bag in his hand, which Oswald said contained curtain rods, which he was taking to install in his room, just half an hour before the appointment, on the sixth floor of the offered book depository. I was present with some of my colleagues. It was 12 in the afternoon and it was lunchtime. Everyone went to the first floor for lunch, but Oswald was present alone on the sixth floor. He went to the depository to see the president's motorcade. A large crowd of people had gathered outside. A few employees of the depository were also busy watching this scene from the windows of the fifth floor. At exactly 12.30, the president's motorcade arrived in which the president was on the right side of the car and the first lady was on his left side. The governor and his wife are sitting in the front. As soon as the presidential limousine takes a left turn from the book depository, the entire area echoes with the sound of the first fire. Coincidentally, at that time, a reporter was recording the entire scene in his camera. Some people, it was said that two shots were fired, but some also heard the sound of three shots, but one bullet hit the president's neck and the other on his head. The driver of the limousine drives away from the location without waiting, but President John F. Kennedy probably died at that very moment. Some described his body as black and some as white, but after the first fire, a motorcade police officer saw a man firing on the sixth floor, so without wasting any time he entered the building. They entered inside and went till the sixth floor, but there was no one present there. Within a few minutes, the entire building was sealed by the police and FBI, and all the employees present inside were now stopped from going out. But all these employees, there was a person missing in the room, and he was none other than Lee Oswald. Lee Oswald had probably immediately left the book depository after taking this action. He first went to his room, changed his clothes, took his pistol, and immediately came out. The police, now ready to arrest him, they was searching. They had made the patrolling of the entire city wireless. An officer on patrol saw Oswald, but before he could do anything, Owlet fired four shots at the police officer and killed him on the spot. Oswald is now close to the movie theater. He had gone and hid himself. Soon the police found him, arrested him, and took him to the police headquarters. For the next two days, the police, FBI, and CIA interrogated him. There was no recording of the Oz world for the public. No one had any information about what happened in the closed room. There is no evidence. On 24th November, when he was being transferred from the police headquarters to jail, a person shot him in front of the media and the police. Oswald also committed suicide in the same hospital where John F. Kennedy was taken. This was the story that was officially disclosed, but many witnesses said that this was not the same person whom they saw at the sixth floor window. Before being shot, Lee Oswald kept saying in front of the media that I am innocent, noob. If this whole story is analyzed, then according to the police, Lee Oswald got the job in the book depository with great cleverness and planning and alone. 
He did all this planning by hiding from FBI, CIA, and police intelligence, but people say that if Offred had done such a perfect planning alone, then how did he commit so many mistakes in the end, like running away from the building, killing the police officer, and blaming himself, arousing suspicion, or hiding in a movie theater? After the assassination of President John F. Kennedy, man investigation reports were published, but each report was making the case more confusing. After Owlet's death, a theory also emerged that perhaps he was killed by the same person. The people who actually did all this planning have been killed because even if it was a conspiracy, it would not have been possible to do this work without insiders. Many people believe that the FBI and CIA were also involved in this conspiracy because Lee Oswald. In fact, he was a former U.S. Marine and was already under surveillance by the FBI. But still, he hid this from the President's Secret Service when he was deciding the route of the motorcade. During the investigation, many evidences were also destroyed, such as that the three bullet shells found from the sixth floor were first removed without taking photographs, and then this photograph was taken after placing the bullets again. The police had made an initial video of the place where the shots were fired, but that too had disappeared somewhere. An evidence of the shooter was definitely recorded, so that this mystery would never remain a mystery. During the shooting, this girl wearing a scarf was seen in almost all the photos and videos, who had a camera in her hand and had captured all the photos of the president's assassination. The scarf she is wearing is called Babushka, and hence she was named Babushka Lady. Many people have the theory that Babushka Lady was also a part of this entire plan, whose job was to record this scene, but till date the FBI has never arrested this girl. I would like to recommend this video on dark truth about weapons industry especially. Thank you for watching.